Hi, this is Eric Bond, the founder of Beat the GMAT. I wanted to let you know that today's session is brought to you by ClearAdmit and Beat the GMAT. If you like what you see today, please check out the new MBA admissions course we built together called Navigating the MBA Admissions Process. This is a complete course on how to get into business school from start to finish. It's a course that I wish that I had when I applied, and I think that you're going to love it. You can learn more by going to udemy.com slash business dash school. Thanks. Hi, I'm Stacey Euler from Clear Admit, and today we're going to be discussing the essays for the Tuck School of Business at Dartmouth. So just a little bit about me. I am currently an admissions counselor for Clear Admit. Prior to joining them, I was at McKinsey and Company, where I led their MBA in advanced professional degree recruiting. And prior to that, I was actually assistant director of admissions at the Tuck School of Business. So this is a school that's pretty near and dear to my heart, so I'm pretty excited for today's conversation. So let's talk about the Tuck essays. So there's four essays, and Tuck is a little bit interesting in that they sort of give a suggested word count. They don't say stick to 500, it's sort of suggested or implied, and by that they really do mean 500. I think they're just being a little bit nicer about it. Um, as I, I've sort of said before, and I always say to my clients, uh, this is something that if you ever talk to me, I'll, I'll probably say over and over again, word counts matter. Suggested word count doesn't mean it's okay if it's 800, it needs to be 500. Um, the general rule of thumb is plus or minus 10%, but that means 550, don't go above it. Uh, the reason for that, honestly, if you start to go way over in word counts, it looks like either you just can't really be concise in your communication and maybe you have some communication issues. And the other reason is if you go over in your word count, you can also look like you're just trying to tell them what you want to tell them and actually not even really answering the question and feel that you're so important that you can just keep going and sort of be abusive of those. So basically, it doesn't leave a good taste in the mouth of an admissions officer when they open an application and they see really long essays where there's sort of blatant abuse. So even though it's suggested, it doesn't mean that you have flexibility, really. So try and keep it, try and keep it no more than 550. So as I said, there's four essays and we're going to talk about each of them today and what you should be thinking about as you approach them. So let's go ahead and talk about the first one. So the first one, really traditional essay, Tuck's been asking this for years. Why is an MBA a critical next step towards your short and long-term goals and why is Tuck the best program for you? Okay, so two part question, right? First part, traditional standard why MBA question. A really great way to think about this is sort of your short and your long-term goals. Um, what have you been doing? What are your short-term goals and what are your long-term goals? Really just getting straight to the heart of it. Not some long story about one day when I was working in Brazil, I woke up and I thought, you know, no one cares, right? It's really, what what are your goals? Just get straight to the point here. Because again, you just only have around 500 words, so you can't tell this elaborate buildup as to why these goals are really important to you, but rather, what are they? What have you done so far that's getting you closer to these goals? And how can the MBA sort of bridge the gap for you to succeed? That's what's most important. So short term, long term. I've actually had clients for some reason think it's great to start with their long term and then backtrack to their short term. That doesn't really work because you're basically saying in 10 years, I want to do this. But in order to get there, let's go back to my short term. You're kind of not really making the best use of your space in an essay when you do that because you're, you're using so much time to sort of backtrack and fill in what you're going to learn from an MBA and then short term to get back to that long term that it's really not a good use of space. So right out of the gate, what are your short term goals? What are your long term goals? And then why tuck? Why tuck is a really important part of this question. I can't really stress enough how much Tuck really cares about its community. It's really small. It's one of the smallest business schools out there, as you probably know if you're applying. And so how much you know about the school really does matter. How are you going to fit in with their culture? What are you going to contribute to their community? What do you plan on doing when you're in Hanover? I mean, it's a really small town in the middle of nowhere. It's a really special place. But how much research have you done really does matter. You're kind of given two opportunities in your Tuck essays to kind of touch on why Tuck and why you want to be there. And this is your first one. Take full advantage of it. So then sort of speaking to that, let's talk about how how you want to approach it in the sense that why Tuck shouldn't be all the great things you're going to learn and get out of the program and how, you know, there's this professor and that professor and this class and that class and this internship and this opportunity so that it just feels very self-centered and all about what you're going to take from the program. It's a give and take thing, right? If they admit you, they're expecting that you're going to give back and others are going to learn from you being there. So remember, 
talking about your fit with the community, the contribution you're going to make, that's very appropriate and should be part of this discussion. It shouldn't just be all the great things that you're going to get out of attending. So keep that in mind. Be really specific. Tuck actually has um, a program where they will link you with a current student. So if you haven't checked that out, get on their website and you can sign up and you can actually talk to a current student or alumni and learn more about the program. So take full advantage of that resource. I mean, I, I know a lot of people will spend 30, 45 minutes on the phone with some of these guys and that's a really great opportunity to get a lot of personalized information. So use it if you can. I strongly suggest checking that out. So the next essay is essay two. So discuss your most meaningful leadership experience. What did you learn about your own individual strengths and weaknesses through this experience? Okay, so this is a meaningful leadership experience. So this is a leadership question. A lot of schools ask some form of leadership questions. So the first thing to think about is what form is this essay going to take? Is it going to be, is it going to be some sort of personal growth um, project? Kind of where is the leadership coming from? Is this going to be professional or is it going to be something that takes place outside of the office? I think either would be appropriate for this. It's just a matter of deciding in the whole balance of all of your essays where this is going to fit in. So one important thing to think about that I think a lot of people don't is before you ever start even writing your essays, you need to figure out what you're going to write about for each of them. So in the case of Tuck, you need to figure out all four essay topics before you actually put pen to paper. I know that's not really what we do anymore, but you know what I mean in the sense that don't just look at this and go, oh, leadership experience. I remember the one time when I led this fundraiser and just start writing about it because what if down the road, that fundraiser would have been a much better example for another question. So basically what I'm saying is don't pick what looks like the easiest question and just start writing before you decide what you're going to write about for all of your topics, because you don't want to be in a situation where you use one and then wish that you hadn't because it works better down the road. So, so my point to all of that is as you look at this, you really want to think about, am I going to write about a lot of personal experiences? Am I going to write a lot of, about a lot of professional experiences? Am I, am I sort of striking that balance here in the sense that, you don't want to just write about all personal or all professional and sort of miss the boat. So in the whole big picture scheme, decide which one makes sense for you, personal or professional, and go with that. So the first part of the prompt is basically personal growth. The, the process that you went through, it should be sort of exercising your leadership, growing into your role. And then the second half of the prompt, which is what did you learn about your own individual strengths and weaknesses? Should, should come out in the sense that you should talk about the evidence of improvement on a weakness, if applicable. But also, this is not a weakness essay question. And you don't want them to think that you're focusing so much on a weakness and not on the growth. This is all about growth. So don't spend a lot of time sort of doting on, oh, you know, the reason that I grew was because I was so bad at X. And you spend so much time talking about the weakness that you're not actually talking about what you learned from that weakness and how that actually helped develop you as a better leader. So spend your focus of your essay talking about leadership, not about weakness. I actually had a client who, who wrote an essay for this and he spent so much time talking about his weakness that I actually thought he was writing for a different prompt. And you don't want them to think that because actually the next question is, is really more applicable for that than it is for this. So again, this is a meaningful leadership experience. It's all about growth. What they're trying to get out of this is what traits and characteristics do you have as a leader? How do you grow? How do you learn and what kind of leader will you be after business school? So that's what they're trying to glean from this essay. And that's really what you should think about as sort of the big picture. So moving on, let's talk about the next essay, which is essay three, which is describe a circumstance in your life in which you faced adversity, a failure or a setback. What actions did you take as a result and what did you learn from this experience? So essentially, this is an essay about how the applicant handles less than favorable circumstances. So this could be just something that you failed at at work. This could be a setback. This could maybe be um, some really negative feedback that kind of impacted the way that you worked. I mean, it doesn't have to be this sort of life or death situation where you were just truly, you know, it was tragic. They're not looking for a tragedy. They're looking for how you respond. What actions do you take when, when things aren't going your way? You know, how do you rise above that? That's really what they're looking for here. So again, this can be professional. This could be academic. This could be something that happens in the community. It's all about, again, striking that balance. If you just wrote about something personal, maybe you need to switch to professional here uh, just to strike the balance. So think about, again, your big picture as you're starting to develop your topic here. But basically, you want to think about 
the situation and was the trouble your own fault was the failure beyond your own control what kind of feedback did you get how did you respond so 500 words isn't really a lot of words for this essay when i think about it it's 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 a decent amount but it's really easy to get so caught up in the story and actually sort of miss the important part which is the actions that you took and the results and the impact if you kind of think of this this is really a behavioral question right they want to know what you do, how you respond, not what happens. So you shouldn't have this essay that's this long story about this really tragic situation and then a really quick, and then everything was okay at the end. It should be really, this is what happened. This was sort of what I did. This is how I reacted. And here are the results. So three parts to this essay, they should be pretty equal as far as the situation, the action and the result. So don't spend too much time on the buildup and don't sell yourself short on the result because really they're looking for sort of the impact that came out of this. So keep that in mind, fully address all the aspects of the question and you'll be in great shape. Let's talk about the fourth essay. So talk seeks candidates of various backgrounds who can bring new perspectives to our community. How will your unique personal history, values and or life experiences contribute to the culture of Tuck? Okay, so this is their second chance they're giving you <laughs> to really say why tech. They've already kind of asked you before in terms of academics and growth and professional goals, how tech's going to work for you. But this is kind of like, all right, have you visited us? Have you talked to us? How much have you really interacted with our community? This is kind of your chance to really sell yourself and prove that you, you belong there. I mean, tech is such a tiny program that it really is about fit more than anything. And, and sort of stress that if you're applying to Tuck, you're probably pretty smart. You probably have a pretty good GMAT. You probably have great work experience. You've sort of met all of sort of the qualifications to be an applicant. So this comes down to why would someone want to sit next to you in class? Why are you more compelling than the next person? Why, as a banker from New York with a 750 GMAT, are you more interesting than the next banker from New York with a 750 GMAT that I'm going to read in five minutes, right? what makes you different? What makes you stand out? And it kind of goes back to something that I, I say to a lot of my clients, which is about humanizing your application and personalizing it. So maybe you're from China and you're super excited to, to learn how to play hockey. Tuck is huge on ice hockey and you've never skated before. And that's something that really matters to you. And you've talked to a couple of people on the hockey team and you're really excited about it. Or maybe you have a family. I mean, at one point, I think it was the class of 2006 at Tuck, 50% of that class was married, and of that, 50% of them had children. That's that's huge for a business school. There's such a great community there for partners, for families. So maybe that's something that's really important to you. Maybe you're at that stage in your life where we're thinking about others and having a partner really matters. And so fit for them is just as important. I mean, this is about the community and you. It's not just your professional goals. It's who you are as a person, and your family is probably part of that if you have one. So don't be afraid to talk about those things. They matter. They matter to you and they should matter in your application, but be really specific. I mean, the nice thing about Tuck is it's so small, it's so open and people will talk to you. So professors will get on the phone with you. Students will gladly get on the phone with you. One thing that Tuck requires is applicant initiated interviews, which means you've got to get to campus. Unless you live you know, internationally, you're expected to come to campus to interview. So I recommend taking advantage of that and planning it early before the deadline so that you can glean some information when you're there. There's a really great place, Still Hall, nice big fireplace. Everybody has to walk through it to get to class, grab a cup of coffee, sit there. You'll probably meet five dogs, 10 kids, and 100 students in an hour. So go sit there, talk to people, take advantage of that interview, really learn from it so that you can come back and put those experiences into your application. It's really going to be worth it. So bottom line, do your research. Don't regurgitate their marketing materials. Go to their information sessions if you can't get to campus. Do what you can to meet people and interact with the community. Take full advantage of it. So that's about it for Tuck. Um, it's a really great program as far as you know, really being able to identify a nice personal fit and culture and community. So if you're really attracted to a smaller program, it, this is probably a great way or a great place to go. And the essay is really asking you to prove that. So if you're really attracted to it, you really find a fit with it, make sure you mention that. Uh, as far as clear admit, we have a few things that could be helpful to you as you go through the application process. We have our one-on-one -on -one consulting services. So basically you can email us your resume to info at clear admit, and we'll set up a time to give you a free assessment of your profile and answer any questions you have about business school and the process and maybe your school selection and whatever it may be. We also have this really great video series called Navigating the MBA Admissions Process. And 
I did this along with several of my colleagues. We put this together over the summer. I think it's a really fabulous, fabulous series, especially if you really aren't in a position to do one-on-one -on -one consulting. It's a great way to sort of get soup to nuts, you know, A to Z admissions help specific to essay strategy, campus visits, interviews, kind of anything you can think of about the process, you can get out of this video series. So check it out. We also have our publications, which are fantastic. And I kind of refer to them as the cliff notes for things, but I think they're actually even better than cliff notes because they're super detailed. Something that would take you hours and hours of web research to figure out about a school, we've already got there for you in this great little PDF. So highly recommend you check out those. We have them for schools, we have them for interviews, we have them for our strategy series. So there's a lot of information available to you. So check those out. And then our admissions community, we, we have our blog. And we also are pretty active on the Beat the GMAT forum, so check that out as well. Thanks a lot! If you liked today's Write Like an Expert session, please be sure to visit udemy.com slash business dash school and check out our course, Navigating the MBA Admissions Process. Take a look at the free preview at the top of this page. This is a complete MBA Admissions course featuring former admissions officers just like the speaker you saw in today's session. Thanks for joining us, and we hope to see you again.